Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. When I started this channel five years ago, this is not a video I thought I'd be making, but today I wanna to talk about shooting a bow while wearing glasses. So I know I'm very new to this and I might have missed a lot of tips and tricks that you at home who've been shooting with glasses longer might already know. And if you do know something, please send me a Facebook message, an Instagram message, an email, or leave a comment on YouTube for everybody to see so we can all gain from that. I'm probably gonna be shooting with glasses for the rest of my life. And I bet you there's a lot of people out there as well that are also struggling with some of these things. I love to learn more about this just as much as the people here. So if you can comment here on YouTube so we all can get any tips and tricks about shooting in glasses, please leave them down below. So really within the past year, I've started to notice that my right eye has been going a little bit. My pins have just been getting a little bit blurrier and blurrier. Now I got a pretty long draw length, 31 inches. And so with even a, using a dovetail my, uh, mount or even the EZV's V, I've noticed it's starting to get fuzzier and fuzzier because it's out pretty far in front of my body, about four feet or so, right? And so I figured it's probably time to start looking into getting a pair of glasses. Or you can go with a verifier and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. There are two ways to combat the problem of needing to shoot with glasses. One, you can just shoot with glasses and try to work around your anchor points so you can see past the bridge of your nose. Or secondly, you can use a verifying lens inside of a verifier peep that would help clear up your pins in front of you. Now that's gonna make the target blurry. So I didn't wanna do that and then we'll talk about this as we dive in a little bit more. You can also go with a peepless method, which I've done here and I'm using the Bomar nose button as an extra piece of very finite anchor. There are pros and cons to all three of these methods and I want to go through them as I found that basically just sticking with shooting with glasses has just been the best for me. So let's start off with talking about why shooting with glasses is kind of a pain. One, the stronger your prescription, the member, the more focus in the center of the lens is the strength of the prescription. Now my prescription is not very high. It's about a plus one. So it's not that bad on the edges. But when you are of course lined up on a string and you're looking down the edge of your lens, it can warp your pins depending on how strong the inside of your prescription actually is. Now mine, like I said, is not that strong. I don't get that warping, but I have talked to friends and colleagues at work that did use to shoot with glasses that have now gone to other methods because their um, lens prescription was so strong. The second problem is seeing past the rim or the edge and also the bridge of your nose. So if you're not shooting with glasses on, you can look past your nose over top of the bridge of your nose just fine to look through your peep. But as soon as you put glasses on and particularly if you're using something that's full frame you actually have to look through the frames now I'm using a half frame lens so the bottom half is not encased in actual metal there's nothing to impede my vision so when I put my glasses up relatively high on my face a little bit higher than I would usually wear them I can see right through the edge of the lens and I don't get any of that frame in the way and it offers a really nice clean sight picture now if you're using a full frame glasses and you have to look past the bridge of your nose you're probably going to get lens in the way the same thing is true with shooting glasses like an amber colored ones you'll notice that they are usually frameless on the inside of either the right or left eye or even both so they're ambidextrous and then you can actually see through your pins or through your rifle scope, depending on what type of instrument you're using. So let's talk about a verifier lens. So there's a verifier and a clarifier, and they should not be mixed up. A clarifier is what you use if you need to clear up a lens inside of your sight housing. You're using a magnifying lens, a two, four, six, eight power. The clarifier lens will clarify the fuzziness of that lens up here, just like a rifle scope works that way or a pair of binoculars works that way. With a verifier, there is no glass up here. It's only in here and its sole purpose is to clear up your pins. The problem with it though is that makes your target blurry. And for me, I still have the ability to focus really well. With my glasses on, I can still focus up close very well and I can focus the distance very well, and particularly in that bow hunting distances, you know, where I can see everything 50 yards and in, I can really snap through that focus focus uh, that focal length very, very simply and very, very easily. But when I threw a verifier lens on there, that ability to change focus got really difficult for me. Looking through a verifier lens, it was leaving everything past my pins blurry. And the further it got out, the blurrier it got. And that was not something that I wanted. So I knew that I wanted to shoot with pins. Now, with, with my glasses on, with my pins. Now, if you want to uh, not deal with the glasses and just have that blurry target because you're used to seeing that blurry target, maybe using a verifier lens is right for you. Now, hopefully your local pro shop would have a whole selection of them and usually in a metal case about this and you literally hold it out at arm's length or you hold it next to your eye while holding out a pin sight at arm's length and you can look through the various 
uh, strengths of verifier to see which one you need. Now, of course, you can ditch the peep, ditch the verifier, ditch the glasses really if you want to, if you wanted to shoot with a no peep system. Depending on how far sighted you are, you can see your target at distance really well. And still, if you can actually make out your pins at close range while keeping both of your eyes open. I can't do that. I get really bad double vision when I keep both eyes open. Even though I'm right eye dominant, I still get that double vision, that split vision. So I have to shoot with a half shut or fully shut left eye. Now I know people you can leave in the comments you had to shoot with both eyes open and eh, I shoot just fine with one eye closed and it's still very comfortable for me. All right so let's start out with anchoring with glasses on with a peepless system. So there's no peep on this bow. I'm using the Easy V bow sight and I'm using the large bar Bomar nose button. What this allows me to do when I come to full draw I'm going to point at my target here. I'm a little bit down at an angle which is actually going to illustrate this point really well. When I come to full draw here I have to anchor that nose button up inside my nostril. Now I'm still going to anchor in the same place on my face. I'm still going to put my thumb back here in the bottom side of my jaw and my nose is going to go up in here on the nose button. Now the way I'm anchoring then with my string to get that third axis anchor point is I'm anchoring with this string, the string of the bow lining up with the interior edge of the riser of this Energy 35. So when I actually then come to full draw and I anchor my jaw and then I anchor the nose button Then I line up the string with the interior edge of the riser. And then I'm able to execute the shot. It actually works out really well. The issue with this is, A, I haven't had a whole lot of practice with it yet. But more importantly and more problematically is when I go to bend down at a short, steep angle shot, which is a lot of shots I end up finding. Most of my shots this year have been well under 20 yards. They've actually been really simple, easy shots. But the problem is because I'm so tall and if I get high up in a tree, I'm dealing with any topography whatsoever where that deer is down beneath me and I have to bend down it really struggles with me to keep a consistent anchor shooting this peepless method. So let's anchor here back again and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here we go again. We're going to come up and anchor. So we're going to pretend that we have a pretty short shot here. This would probably uh, be equivalent to about a 15, maybe 12, 15 yard shot here. So I would come up, come to anchor, and this is pretty good right here. Anchor fine, string on the edge. Now let's say that deer comes into like five yards. I don't know if you can tell or not, the peep comes out of my nose. It comes out of my nose pretty hard, even though I'm bending at the waist as best as I can. When I go this way, I'm going to end up shooting significantly. When the peep goes up higher, or the, the nose button rather goes up higher, I'm actually going to undershoot. And this happened to me in Indiana this year. I had a shot at a doe at 12 yards. I was very high up in the tree, about 30 feet up in the tree when I was standing on my saddle platform. And I ended up shooting right underneath her. The left right was absolutely perfect, a little bit quartering away. It was an absolutely excellent shot angle, but that had slid up my nose. I hadn't recognized it in the heat of the moment. And I shot right underneath her at that really steep angle of 12 yards, 30 feet in the tree. That is the biggest issue with me. I have found that the more and more I end up in the woods and I hunt, I'm actually getting shorter and shorter and shorter shots. Now, whether the deer are getting dumber or I'm getting better putting myself in the right spot, I don't know. But I've taken very few shots over 25, definitely very few in the 30 and over category in just the past five or six years. And so shooting this peepless method with the glasses, even though it's really great for on the ground shooting, and it's been really good here, when I get that really in the heat of the moment, shot at like 10 yards and I'm trying to still come up here and anchor into my nose and really make sure I'm getting all those anchor points set correctly. It just hasn't been working out well for me. And so I immediately even though I had no problems with using the nose button or using the EZV, I had to make a switch back over to a peep and that's where the cure comes in and that's where a whole new anchor system and anchor location comes in so I can use my glasses. All right, so with my traditional anchor point, I'm usually anchoring my thumb into my jaw and the knuckle up here into the socket of my earlip. But when I do that and I have to turn my nose over the string, I was looking right into the side of my glasses. So I'm gonna come to full draw here and even at this short distance, Anchoring over, I am right down the middle of my glasses and my nose piece is getting in the way. What I had to do is I had to move my face over and come up a little bit more. So I'm actually gonna anchor this way almost to the camera here. I had to bring my nose onto the side and bring my face more forward into it. So it brings the peak closer to my eye 
and my nose to the side of the string. When I did that, and now it doesn't matter. Now it doesn't matter which angle I'm at, and I can execute a really clean shot. Everything's really simple. So just by that little bit of a head adjustment and moving my anchor position a little bit higher, I'm able to get my nose to the side of the string, which turns my head more, right? So now instead of looking over this way, I'm now looking to the side of the string. It puts my eye more in the center of my lens. I'm able to see through my peep and I'm actually able to execute a really clean shot. Now, is that anchor system gonna work for everybody? Probably not. There's certain axle to axle lengths of bows. I've only done this with the Cure, which is about 32 inches axle to axle. I'd be really interested to see how it works with a bow that's a little bit longer and opens up that string angle a little bit more if I can still look past the side of my nose. I don't know. I'll find out with my result this winter when I go to shoot indoor and it's 38 inches axle to axle length. But for now with the hunting bow, I've been very successful. I've taken a couple of deer with this bow already this fall. Everything has worked out really well with just shooting the glasses and being able to put my string on the side of my nose rather than the tip. And that just that little bit, that little bit of maybe three eighths or a quarter quarter inch of adjustment from the tip to over to the side has put my eye through more of the center of my lens. I'm able to see a little bit better and I don't have to monkey around with a verifier. Now I can actually see my pins clearly and if I want to look past my pins and focus on the deer or whatever else I'm drawing on, I can do that snap back back to my pins. I can go back and forth and it's really simple for me with my glasses. Now the older I get, am I able to be able to focus like that as quickly and as sharply? Who knows? But for right now, it's the way it's working out for me. I'm really comfortable with it. I'm getting used to wearing the glasses. I'm not experiencing a lot of fog up that a lot of guys have uh, complained about in uh, what I've seen on forums and in online posts and stuff like that. Um, they've actually stayed really clean for me. That half frame has been working out really well. I'm very glad I didn't get a full frame or a completely frameless. I still have good rigidity. They still stay on my face and I'm very happy that I'm able to see now what I'm shooting at, but I'm able just with that little bit of an anchor tweak, able to shoot with a peep and shoot with my glasses on. And that's all for this video. If you have any questions about shooting with glasses or bow hunting or archery or anything else, please follow the links in the description below and hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, and send me an email or just leave a comment for me here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery. Archery hunting, if you so choose, definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation and we'll get to see you next time.